Well, Mr. President, our House Republican colleagues are struggling with a bad case of Groundhog Day. The government faces a critical funding deadline in a few weeks. If that deadline isn't met, the government will shut down. Only bipartisanship will help us meet that deadline. But instead of pursuing bipartisanship, Speaker Johnson is yet again, yet again, wasting time caving to the hard right despite his razor thin majority. Hasn't he learned? This is what got the Republicans in trouble the last few times that we had to fund the government. An appeal to the right wing, the right wing in their sort of strict, narrow, partisan ideology thinks they can force everybody, even re dissident Republicans, let alone Democrats and the president to go along with them, but of course it doesn't happen. And then we come to a bipartisan agreement. Oh yes. It is certainly Groundhog Day once again, as the Republicans repeat the same mistake they've made over and over again. And that is the House Republicans, led unfortunately by Speaker Johnson. As I've said, we've seen this play out time and time again. Is it any surprise that the Speaker's purely partisan CR seems to be running into trouble? The answer is very simple. The House should stop wasting time on a CR proposal that cannot become law. The House should stop wasting its time in gathering together among themselves, not even all of them, putting together a bill without consulting Hakeem Jeffries, myself, or the President. But that's what they do. And it doesn't work. It just doesn't work. Instead, Republicans should work with Democrats on a bipartisan package, one that has input from both sides, one that avoids harmful cuts, one that is free of poison pills. We're ready to sit down and work with them immediately. Now, to be fair, the Speaker's proposal was not entirely bad news. I was heartened to see that Speaker Johnson's proposal held on to the bipartisan top-line spending agreement that I reached with the Speaker earlier this year. It's a good sign that Speaker Johnson seems to accept reality that any CR we produce in the coming weeks will have to include that funding level. But sadly, Mr. President, sadly, the good news ends there. Because on the whole, the House Republican CR is an unserious and uncooked product. It's not serious for Republicans to say they want to kick the can down the road for six months on funding the government. Funding the government is the most basic responsibility we have in Congress. So to say let's hold off for half a year should be a non-starter. It's also not serious for Republicans to reduce, to release a proposal that endangers troop readiness, risks troop pay, hamstrings our efforts to outcompete the Chinese government. You cannot run an army on a six-month CR. You cannot put everything on hold for six months, have defense contracts put on ice for six months, and allow for Russia and the Chinese government to gain on us. It's that simple. And the head of the Joint Chiefs sent a letter that said just that. It's not serious for Republicans to say they want, they want to pass a CR that fails to properly extend, de-verify, H-2B visas and other border security programs that stop drugs like fentanyl. They talk a lot, a lot about the border, but then the fundamental ways that we toughen up enforcement on the border and interior of country with E-Verify, they ignore. It shows how political this document is. It's particularly egregious that the Speaker's own proposal disbands a critical law enforcement effort to stop drug smuggling, drug cartels, money laundering. But the parade of horribles keeps going. It just doesn't end there. It's not serious for Republicans to say that they want to pass a CR that forgets fund to fund critical health programs. Under the Republican proposal, telehealth would be harmed. We know how important telehealth is, particularly for rural Americans. It's made health care much better, cheaper, and more effective in rural areas. But they don't fund it. Wait for six months to tell someone in a rural area who needs medical help? People with diabetes would struggle to get the aid they need. 
and community health centers, only, often the only resource for millions of working class Americans to get their health care if they don't have insurance but fall above the Medicare and Medicaid lines, or the Medicaid lines, to get their health care. That's where they get it. That funding, again, would be endangered. And if all that weren't enough, Republicans have no plan for extending Farm Bill funding. One of the consequences of failing to pass the Farm Bill is going over the so-called is going over the so-called dairy cliff, which is what happens when the dairy margin cover pro coverage program dries up. For this to happen would decimate farmers across the country, and I know in my own state, farmers have told me some of them would go out of business if we went over that dairy cliff. Monthly payments that help farmers cover the gap between the price of milk and the fee and feed would halt. And it would not only affect our farmers, it would affect our consumers. The cost of milk needed for our babies and for healthy kids and all of us. I like milk. I look forward to drinking it a lot. But the cost of milk could potentially double if we went over that dairy cliff. It would create seismic disruptions in our supply chains and cause market panic. So these are just some of the terrible consequences of proceeding with the Speaker Johnson's six-month unserious CR proposal. It's a little surprise that the White House has already issued a veto threat. 